So for exam two, let's get started. So number one, which of the following statements is false about strong acids? Now remember, strong acids, they are strong electrolytes, they completely dissociate, and um, they don't form buffers. So that's important things to know. So uh, strong acids are good electrolytes. That's true. Strong acids produce high solutions with high pH. No, they produce low pH, right? Stronger acids, lower pH. So that is false, which makes it the correct answer. Now, I don't like D. I don't like answer choice D because strong acids have a lower pH than weak acids. Sometimes if you have a very dilute strong acid and a very concentrated weak acid, the weak acid might have a lower pH. So that's not necessarily true, but I'm getting too nuanced. Okay, next, the dihydrogen phosphate ion has both a conjugate acid and conjugate base. These are respectively what? So conjugate acid means you're adding a hydrogen to it. A conjugate base means you're taking away a hydrogen from it. So if you add a hydrogen to it, the conjugate acid would be H3PO4. So that's either A, B, it's either A or B. If you remove a, an H from it, you get HPO4 2 minus. So that makes B the correct answer. And these type of, so a lot of the hydrogen phosphates, they are what we call amphioteric or amphoteric. That means it can either accept or donate a hydrogen. It can act as both an acid or a base. And we talked about substances that are amphoteric, such as water, uh, and some of these polyatom or poly uh, polyprotic acids. All right, next, number three, a 0.1 molar solution of which of the above acids will have the lowest concentration of H3O plus. So to have a low concentration of H3O plus, that means it is a weak acid. So basically, which one of these acids is the weakest? It's the one with the lowest Ka or the highest pKa, however you want to look at it. And that is hydrocyanic acid. Next, a uh, 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl is mixed with 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar of this acetic acid. And you know it's acetic acid because it's given in the table right up here, right here. So it's a weak acid. What is the pH? So important to know. And this, it makes sense, but um, some of you need might need a review on it. That's why we're here. If you mix a strong acid with a weak acid, the strong acid's pH is the only thing you need to figure out. The weak acid is negligible. If you mix a weak acid with a weak acid, the same thing might apply. If the Ka values are 10 to the third or more different. So for example, if we mix hydrofluoric acid with hydrocyanic acid, we just have to do an ice chart for hydrofluoric acid to get the pH because the amount of hydrogen that hydrofluoric acid will donate to the solution with the amount of H3O plus at equilibrium will be so much that it will push the hydrocyanic acid even more towards the left side and it will not dissociate even more. So it's negligible. But if we were to mix formic acid with hydrofluoric acid, we would have to do two ice charts. Well, we have to do the ice chart of the one that's the highest Ka. Well, it really doesn't matter. We have to do the ice chart of one of them first, and then take that hydrogen, put that into the second ice chart, and then to and figure out the additional H plus that's produced by the other acid if they're close in Ka values. But in this case, we're just taking a strong and a strong and a weak. So the answer for the pH would simply be the negative log of 0 0.1 which is probably one, so the answer would be A. All right, whoops, I'm at, nope, that's incorrect. I tricked myself. Now, because we are adding, we're adding it to something, the total volume at the end is actually not 10 milliliters, but 20 milliliters. So it would be the moles, so the moles of the HCl would be 0 0.1 equals X over 0 0.01, so that is, 0 0.001 moles divided by the total volume, which is 0 0.02. And that would be equal to, I think, two. And that would be the, uh, well, no, whoops. That's the, 
that's the molarity. So this is equal to two or 0 0.2. Wait, I messed up. Hold on. Lose my mind here. 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.02. That's 0 0.05 molar. All right, that makes sense because it's a two-fold dilution. So now you have a 0 0.05 molar of HCl after you add the acetic acid to it. So now negative log of that of 0 0.05 is equal to let's see, 0.05 log 1.3. So C is your answer. Next, number five. <clears throat> a solution is made from mixing 100 milliliters of this uh, formic acid with 100 milliliters of 0.2 molar formate, so sodium formate. What is the pH of resulting solution? Now, a buffer. So this is a buffer. And how do I know it's a buffer? The definition of a buffer is anything, any solution that or a mixture that has a weak base and its conjugate acid or a weak acid and its conjugate base. In this case, we have formic acid and formate, which is the conjugate base. So we can simply use the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation pH equals pKa plus the log of base over acid. So we can figure out the pKa of the formic acid from the chart, which is 3.75. So we put in 3.75 plus the log of the concentration of base. Now the concentration of base after you mix it will change because now instead of 100 milliliters, you have 200 milliliters. So we first need to find out the moles. We have 0.2 molar of this sodium formate, 0.2, it would be 0.2 equals X over 0 0.1. So your X equals 0 0.02 moles divided by 200 milliliters because that's the new volume. 0 0.02 divided by 0.2 is 0.1. So we have the base is 0 0.1, and the acid is going to be half of that, which is 0 0.05, since there's half the concentration. And then solving this would get you the pH. And I'm not going to do that here. It's actually log of 2. So I could do it here. So 2 log of 2 plus 3.75, that's 4.05. So that'd be C. Okay, number six, use the Ka values in the table to determine which acid would be ideal choice for a buffer with 5.05 pH. So for a buffer, <clears throat> an effective buffer, we want the pKa to be plus or minus one from the buffer range. Now the pH is, or, or, or from the, the interest, the pH of interest, which is 5.05. So we want 4.05 to 6.05. And that's the only one is acetic acid. That's 4.76. So it would be acetic acid only. Next, number seven, for a solution with equal molar HCN and NACN, which statement is false? So this example of the common ion effect, it is, because think about what's happening. HCN will become a small amount of H plus and a small amount of CN minus. NACN, will completely dissociate since it is soluble. You'll end up with Na and Cn minus. When this extra H plus sees this Cn, it, it's going to form a pretty strong bond and it's going to want to stick to it. Therefore, it'll go that way. In other words, this is an example of the common ion effect. Because you yes, you have dissociation of this acid, HCn, but you are also introducing another source of CN minus into the solution from the conjugate base NACN, which will cause the reaction to go to the left. So this is a common, common ion effect. So that's not the right, right answer because we're looking for something that's false. The H plus is larger than it would be if it was only HCN. This is not true, meaning that's the right answer. Because since we have the additional H, the additional CN minus, this actually moves the reaction and pushes it in the left direction and towards the reactants, which decreases 
the amount of H plus. Meaning the H plus is actually lower than it would be if it was just HCN. All right, number eight. So which of the following mixtures would result in a buffered solution? Now, keyword here, result in a buffered solution. So we know what a buffer is. It's weak base and conjugate acid or vice versa. But which of the following results when they mix together in a buffer? So if we mix 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar of HCl, it's a strong acid, with the same amount of a strong base, that just makes a neutral solution. That's no. Mixing 100 milliliters of a weak base plus 100 milliliters of more base, that's just, that's not doing anything. That's just making a strong base. Nope. Mixing 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl with 100 milliliters of 0.1 of a weak base potentially, but the thing is you have the same amount, so it's equal molar. What will happen here is they will neutralize each other completely, and you'll have only the conjugate acid, NH4 plus ammonium. You'll only have ammonium in this solution, so that would not be the answer. And then D, mixing 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl with 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar NH3. This would create a buffer because now that you're adding only 50 milliliters, that means you have half the amount that you do of the base. So only, so all of the HCl will be used to neutralize half of the NH3, meaning you'll have 50% of NH4 plus, and then 50% is the unneutralized NH3. That looks like a buffer to me because you have the weak base and the conjugate acid, and it's gonna be in a 50-50 ratio. Okay, so make a note on that question if you want me to um, explain it again after we're done, because that one, um, I, I feel like I might have lost some of you. All right, number nine, in titrating 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid with 0.2 molar NaOH, the equivalence point, or the solution at the equivalence point is blank. So, it's a strong acid with a strong base. The equivalence point is going to be seven. So the equivalence point is very acidic. That's not true. Slightly acidic, not true. But what will we end up with if they completely mix and neutralize? We would have NaCl and water. So you'll have 0.1 molar NaCl. And the reason why it's 0.1 molar is because we're going to be diluting since they're the same concentration, if we add them together, we're actually, they're diluting each other. And it's going to be 0.1 molar of each reactant. So you'll have 0.1 molar at the end because the volume will double. All right. So 10, uh, which of the following reactions does H2PO4 minus act as an acid? So if it acts as an acid, it wants to lose that hydrogen. Remember, acids lose hydrogen, bases gain hydrogen. So it's going to go to lose an acid, lose a hydrogen, which is B. It looks like B. Um, here it gains a hydrogen. Here it's, it is a conjugate base because it's a product of a lost hydrogen. So yeah, only B. Because we're looking for that loss of hydrogen. It goes from H2PO4 minus to the product HPO42 minus. Next, this one was a little bit tough. So the equilibrium constants Ka for HCN and HF are 6.2 10 to negative 10 and 7.2 10 to negative 4, respectively. What is the order of base strength? So what this is asking, this is confusing because I don't like this question at all because it was, you're having these, uh, so greater than symbols, meaning relative order of base strengths, they didn't specify, usually we could mean either from less, least to greatest or greatest to least. This means from greatest to least because we have this uh, greater than sign. So the relative order of the base strengths. So if you have a weaker acid, that will be a stronger base. Another important concept to keep in mind. Weaker acid means stronger base. The weakest acid here, uh, but let's, let's, write, let's write the Ka's first. So the Ka's we have for HCN, 
is 6.2 10 to the negative 10. For HF, 7.2 10 to the negative 4. And for water, the Ka is actually 10 to the negative 14. So which one of these is the weakest base? The weakest acid is the, well, the weakest acid is the strongest base. So the weakest acid here is going to be H2O. So that would be the strongest base. So automatically it's B. But wait a minute. Then the second strongest base would be the second weakest acid, which is HCN. So I actually think the answer is none of these. Yeah. So in order, it'd be H2O, HCN, HF. Because HF would be the weakest base since it's a stronger acid. Okay. Number 12. Place the following in order. Place the following in order of increasing acid strength. Now, we are just adding high, adding oxygens here. And we learned about this in lecture a little bit. If you have a Lewis structure, let's say like this, and we have multiple oxygens on the bromine, in order to make an acid stronger, think about this. A strong acid has a weak bond to the hydrogen. A weak acid has a strong bond to the hydrogen and does not want to get let go of it, so, such as HCN. HCN has a pretty damn strong bond to hydrogen and it doesn't like to get rid of it. The way you make these bonds weaker is by introducing more electronegativity away from it. If you pull the electrons away from the hydrogen, it will become a weaker bond. The hydrogen will kind of want to just flow off by itself. So this is exactly what we're getting at with this question, is that the more oxygens you add, the stronger the acid gets because all of the electrons are over here and they're being sucked away from the bond in the hydrogen. So the hydrogen would wanna go off on its own. So in, if we're increasing the acid strength, going from one oxygen to two to three will increase the strength. So E is your answer. Number 13, calculate H plus in a solution that has a pOH of 4.12. So we know that 14 minus pOH equals pH. So off the bat, we can come up with 14 minus 4.12 is our pH is 9.88. We also know that the negative log of H plus is equal to pH. So we can take 10 to the negative 9.88 to come up with H plus. And I'm not sure what that is, but you can you can figure that out. I'm not sure why I can figure it out. Let's see. So 10 to the 9.88 negative 0.79. Is that an answer here? Maybe I did it wrong in the uh, in the calculator. Not sure. Hmm. Anyway, but that's, this is, whatever this number is, you, that's the answer. It should be very small. Yeah, 1.3 10 to negative 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should be very small because the pH of 9 is a base, right? So you can have a very low hydrogen concentration. All right, next, number 14. Fe3 plus forms a complex with phosphate. If S is the solubility of iron 3 phosphate, the correct expression for solubility is what? So we have iron 3 phosphate, which is simply FePO4. It dissociates into Fe3 plus plus PO4 3 minus. If we were to do a molar solubility, you just get simply S and S. So it'll be just S squared because there's no coefficients here. If there was a 2 here, it would actually be 2S parentheses squared times s, which is equal to 4s cubed. But we don't have that. We just have s times s, which is s squared. A solution of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 molar of silver nitrate, and you have KBr are mixed, which of the following statement is correct? So 
we have the solubility constant KSP of silver bromide, which is a not insoluble, 10 to negative 13. And if we are adding an, a, or a silver nitrate to KBr, what's going to happen? You have a Q. So if we look at AGBr yields Ag plus plus Br minus. Q means the solubility or the uh, the quotient, reaction quotient at initial, uh, at initial, initially. So our initial concentration of a, of a silver is 1.2, 10 to negative six. Initial concentration of Br is 0 0.1. If you multiply those together, you get 10 to negative seven. That is much higher than 10 to negative 13, meaning this will want to precipitate a lot. So it's going to, Q is much higher than KSP, meaning a precipitate will form. It'll want to go back to the left, is in other words. And if you go back to the left, that's the same thing as forming the solid um, that needs to, that will precipitate. Number 16, describe the pH of the following salts. Now, I love teaching pH in salts, and I've went over it several times with my classes at least, but the way you determine it is you break apart the ion and you look at what is it going to react with, and is it going to stick to the hydrogen? Is, or is the, uh, sorry, is the cation going to stick to the hydrogen? Is the anion going to stick to the hydroxide? No, I, the opposite. Is the anion going to stick to the hydrogen? Is the cation going to stick to the hydroxide? So for NaF, NaF, you split those apart and you put it in water. You get NaOH and HF. The result, strong base, weak acid. So it's basic. So I'll put a B over it. Ammonium chloride becomes HCl and ammonium hydroxide when it goes into water. Strong acid, weak base, acid. KI becomes KOH and HI. Strong acid, strong base, neutral. NH4F becomes NH4OH, HF. Weak base and weak acid. This one's tough. If you mix a weak base and a weak acid, it depends on the KA values and KB values. So you can actually determine that HF is going to be a stronger acid because the Ka value is higher than the Kb value of NH4OH. So you'd have to compare the Ka of the acid, of the weak acid, to the Kb of the weak base. In other words, without that information, we can't tell. So um, describe the pH of the following salts. If we're going in that order, we have basic, acidic, neutral, and we cannot tell with out further information. So the answer would be D. All right, 17. What will happen if a small amount of HCl is added to 0.1 molar of the formic acid? Well, it will become very acidic. And also it will decrease. So if you have, so think about this, what is it doing? H plus plus C. H C O O minus. All right. So if we have this dissociation of the weak acid, if we are increasing the initial H plus based on La Chatelier's principle, one of the most important principles in this class is that it will move towards the left. It will decrease ionization. So that's what will happen if you add a little bit of HCl because that'll already give the right side of this reaction enough H to not need more. So the Ka will increase. The Ka won't change. The Ka can't change. That's that's a trait of the acid itself. But the percent ionization will decrease because it'll go more towards the left. So that's C. All right, number eighteen. Which of the following mixtures would not be described as a buffer? So we know what a buffer is: weak acid plus conjugate base, or vice versa. This one we have NH four plus. And NH3, so that's a weak, that's a uh, conjugate pair that will be a buffer. Here we have acetate 
And then acetic acid, that's a conjugate pair. HNO2 and NO2 minus, or KNO2, that's a conjugate pair. And they're both weak, remember. But now for D, it's the same thing, but we have NO3. And we know that NO3 is nitrate, which forms nitric acid, which is not weak and it's strong. Therefore, it cannot be a buffer. And that's our answer. All right, number 19. Which compound is, si is the most soluble? So the most soluble means it has the highest KSP, meaning it will not precipitate until it gets to... So it, it, will, it will not precipitate until it um, gets to a very high concentration. Then it'll start to precipitate. The other ones require a low concentration to precipitate. So the answer would be C. Just like K, so KA and KSP are similar in terms of in, interpreting them. Now, KA is for acids. The higher the KA value, the stronger the acid. The higher the KSP value, the better the solubility. That's an easy way to think about it. Number 20, this one was dumb. I put it on here on purpose because um, which of the following, in the following reaction, there's no calcium. So every answer choice has calcium except for this one. So B is the answer. But um, the reason why B is the answer is because a Lewis base is a electron donor and, and the Lewis acid is electron acceptor. That's how we, we view those. All right. <clears throat> Next. So 21, if the Ka for HCN is that, what is the Kb for Cn minus? So we know that Ka times Kb is 10 to negative 14. So 10 to negative 14 divided by the Ka would give us our Kb, which should be 10 to negative fifth, I think. So it's not going to be 10 to the fourth. It'll be probably C. So that's how you figure out that. You can go you can go really quickly from Ka to Kb by dividing by 10 to negative, or sorry, by 10 to negative 14 divided by the Ka or Kb. Number 22, calculate the pOH of 0.32 molar barium hydroxide. Now, barium hydroxide is a strong base. Remember, group 1A and group 2A hydroxides are strong. And then for those of you who are not in my class, the strong acids, Hickel, Hibber, High, Hinoa, Cloiseau. So what that means is the popular strong acids, you have Hickel, Hibber, High, Hino. There's actually two Hiclos. And then Hisso. Like that. So these are the common strong acids. Anything not on this list of Hickel, Hibber, High, Hino, Hiclo, Hisso is not a strong acid. It's a weak acid. Important thing to keep in your memory bank. So um, this barium hydroxide is a group 1A or 2A. It's a 2A uh, hydroxide, therefore it's strong. So if it will completely dissociate, but it will create two OH minuses, meaning we have to multiply this concentration by two to make it 0.64 molar of our hydroxide ions. Because that's what we really have. To calculate the pH of that, we would do the negative log of, or pOH, negative log of 0.64, and that will give us a very low pOH. So 0.64, log of it, 0.19. Yep, thank you. Good. All right, number 23. How many moles of HCl must be added to 100 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution of methylamine? to give a buffer having a pH of 10. To me, this sounds like, so we're using keywords here, buffer, pH of 10. So I'm thinking Henderson Hasselbeck, right? That's the buffer equation. pH equals pKa plus the log of base over acid. So the pH is 10, 10.0 equals the pKa. We're given the pKb. So we could actually make, so we can find pKa very easily. We just do 14 minus the pKb equals the pKa. So I'm going to do that. But then I'll show you another way we can do it after that. 3.36. So that's good. The pKa is 10.64 plus 
the log of base over acid. Now the base concentration is going to be 0 0.1. And then the acid concentration is X. And we'd have to solve that. So not exactly sure what that is off the top of my head, but um, you can figure that out. And another thing, another way we can do it is we can actually make the Henderson Hasselbeck equation in terms of a base. So you, that's a that's a valid thing you can do. You can say that, all right, if this is true, then this must be true as well. The pOH equals the pKB plus the log of acid over base. So we can completely flip the Henderson Hasselbeck and make a basic version of it. So we can put in, for the, if the pH is 10, the pOH is 4. The pKB they give to you, which is 3.36, plus the log of acid, which we don't know, and base, which is 0 0.1. So these should both come up with the same answer. And you can try that on your own. All right, 24. Determine the percent ionization of a 0.18 solution of hypochlorous acid and the Ka is 10 to negative 8. So we can figure out the ice chart here. So HClO yields H plus plus ClO minus. We start out with 0 0.18, 0 and 0, plus X plus X minus X. We come up with X squared over 0.18 minus X equals our Ka value of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, so from this, <clears throat> we can solve for X. And X would give us not the percent association. It'll give us the equilibrium value of hydrogen. From this equilibrium value of hydrogen, we can take X and divide it by the initial value of our concentration, 0.18. This will be our percent ionization. And then you have to divide it by 100 to actually get, or multiply by 100 to actually get percent. This is equal to percent ionization. It's the amount of hydrox or hydrogen divided by the total initial concentration. All right, 25. So 100 milliliters of a buffer that consists of 0.2 molar of NH3 and 0.2 molar of NH4Cl is titrated with a, a, a strong acid of HCl. Calculate the pH of the resulting solution given that the Kb is that. Okay, so what we're doing is we first have equal molar of acid and base, of the base and its conjugate acid. And what is that molar value, right? That molar value is, we can figure it out, 0 0.2 molar equals X divided by 0 0.1 liters. Multiply that, you get 0 0.02 moles. So we have, and I'll make a chart here, NH3, NH4 plus. We initially start out with 0 0.02 moles of each. We are adding, to the solution, 25 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl. 0.2 molar, there we go, 0.2 molar. So 0.2 times 0 0.025, there we go, is not that. I don't have to edit this out for the video. Is actually 0 0.005 moles. Okay, so now this, this amount of HCl is going to be subtracted from the base. And it's and what is it going to do? It's going to convert that base into its conjugate acid, which will actually add it to the conjugate acid. And we end up with 0 0.015 for the remaining base and 0 0.025 for the remaining acid. So then we can put this into Henderson Hasselbeck. And we can say that the pH equals the pKa, which 
we're given the KB. So we can actually find PK. We can actually do the other way around. Um, POH equals negative log of the KB, which is the PKB. Plus the log of acid, which is your 0 0.025 divided by your base, like that. And you can find the POH there. And then do 14 minus POH to get your pH. So that one was rather um, a little bit convoluted because I messed up. But basically what you're doing for when you have a buffer and you are adding something to a buffer, whatever you're adding, if it's an acid or a base, let's say it's an acid, just like this exact example problem. If it's an acid, it will be neutralizing the basic component of the buffer. Then it will be converting that basic component to the conjugate acid component. So initially, if you look at these the numbers I wrote in that little chart, the balance was a one-to-one. -one. And thank you, Michael, is our answer. So it's a it's a one-to-one, -one, 0 0.02 moles and 0 0.02 moles. Once we have the acid and we're adding it to neutralize the basic component, that number goes down. But at the same time, that conjugate or that base becomes its conjugate acid when it converts after it's neutralized. So you have NH4 plus is increased. So then you have a new ratio and the pH only changes a little bit. That's why buffers work. Okay, let's move on. Home stretch. We might not even have time for the third one. Um, but let's see. So what is the molar solubility of calcium fluoride in a 0.5 molar sodium fluoride solution? So calcium fluoride, CaF2, it is dissociating into Ca plus plus 2F minus. If we're doing an ice chart to figure out solubility, we this is a solid. Calcium is 0. Fluoride is 0 0.5 plus X or plus S plus S. We have S, 0 0.5 plus S. Okay, so for this, or sorry, 0 0.5 plus 2s, because we have a 2 as the coefficient. So to figure out the molar solubility s, we can put this into the molar solub or the KSP expression, which is just 0 0.5 plus 2s whole thing squared times s for the calcium. And this is going to equal the KSP. From getting this S value, that's that's the answer, whatever the answer may be. <clears throat> okay, so and I'm going to keep going, but please, when we're done, ask questions about about these kind of problems, and I'll try to um, make it better for you. All right, 27. Calculate the pH of a solution containing that many moles of nicotinic acid dissolved in. 350 milliliters of water. So ice chart off the bat, we're taking a monoprotic weak acid and we are trying to find the pH. So we have 0 0.025 moles divided by 0 0.35. So we have our nicotinic, I'll put NA for nicotinic acid, is going to be equal to 0 0.071 molar. That's the molarity of it. So we can say, well, we'll call it HA for now. So HA yields H plus plus A minus. We start out with 0 0.071. We have zero of the products minus X plus X. You end up with x squared divided by 0 0.071 minus x. And this is going to equal our Ka of 1.1 times 10 to the negative fifth. I'll rewrite that over here. x squared divided by 0 0.071 minus x equals 1.1 times 10 to the negative fifth. Solving for this x does not give us the pH. It gives us the hydrogen concentration, the negative log of x will give us the ph so that's what you'd have to solve okay <clears throat> number 28 
So a solution contains 0.1 molar of HCl and 0.1 molar of HNO2, so a strong and a weak acid. What is the concentration of NO2 minus ions? So this one's an ice chart, but you have a strong acid to begin with. So we have to change the ice chart a little bit. So we have the dissociation of HNO2 to H plus plus NO2 minus. Initially, our HNO2 is 0 0.1. Our H plus normally our H plus is zero. Now, since we have a strong acid in there, it's not. It's 0 0.1. Since that the strong acid associates completely. And then the NO2 minus is zero. So then we have plus X plus X minus X, 0 0.1 minus X, 0 0.1 plus X, and X. So to solve this for X, X would give us the nitrite ion concentration, it would be simply the equilibrium expression for Ka, which is x times 0 0.1 plus x divided by 0 0.1 minus x equals 4.6 times 10 to the negative 14. Solving for x would be the answer. Okay. Moving on. Number 29, the molar solubility of tin iodide is, meaning S, is 1.28 times 10 to the negative 2. What is the KSP value? So we need to figure out the KSP expression first. So tin 2 iodide, so SN, iodide is a negative 1 charge, so it'll be SNI2. This means the the uh, dissolving would be SN2 plus plus 2I minus, which means if you were to do a solubility expression, you would get S and 2S squared. And that equals KSP. So it would be 4S cubed equals KSP. And we know what S is. So S is this. So it'd be four times this S cubed equals the KSP. And that might be, I don't know. That might be the uh, 10 to negative six. One, it's one of the 10 to negative six answers. Okay. Uh, question, why isn't HCL in the association? Okay, you get 8.4, 8.4, 4, 10 to negative six for that one for number 29. Uh, we have a question about 28. Why is not HCl in the expression? So tricky, it is. Because if you think about it, when we have a strong acid, it's this, at second zero, right? At time zero, it's already dissociated. So we're basically adding a weak acid into a solution that already has 0.1 molar hydrogen and 0.1 molar Cl minus. That's why our initial concentration of H plus is not zero like it normally is. It's 0 0.1 because of the HCl. That's what it changes here. And that actually lowers the dissociation amount of this HNO2 because the presence of this 0 0.1 molar rather than zero, based on La Chatea's principle, shifts the equilibrium towards the left. So the dissociation going forward will be less than it normally would. So that's the difference here. That's why when we add a strong acid to a weak acid, the dissociation of that weak acid is quenched because H plus is already present. Okay, next. So, and lastly, a 50 milliliter solution of the butyric acid is titrated with sodium hydroxide as a titrant what is the pH at the equivalence point? Okay, so the equivalence point, what we learned about titrations, the equivalence point is where all of the acid is neutralized and it becomes conjugate base. In order to find the pH at the equivalence point, we have to use the conjugate base. And we have to use the KB. That's what we learned in class. 
So to find the KB, we could do 10 to the negative 14 divided by the KA, 1.5 10 to the negative 5, and that equals the KB. Then we can say, all right, if we have this amount of that butyric acid, we need to figure out how many moles we have because that will tell us exactly how many moles of the sodium hydroxide we needed to neutralize the whole thing. So that's easy. We can just do 0 0.0217 equals X over 0 0.05 liters. And then get my calculator, 0 0.0217 times 0 0.05. That is 0 0.001085 moles. That's how many moles of the NaCl or NaOH are needed to neutralize. So if we have this many moles, that means that is the amount that neutralized the butyric acid and converted it to its conjugate base. So this is a tricky problem because we're not, it's a lot of steps. Because of that, we have a, a, a 0 0.0302 molar solution of the sodium hydroxide. We need to figure out what is the volume needed to add to get to this many moles, which again is easy, but it's still just a lot of steps. So we can do that over here, 0 0.0302 equals the moles, 0 0.001085, divided by liters. So we can take that number, divide it by 0 0.0302, and we get 0 0.035 liters, so 35.9 milliliters of NaOH. So that's how much NaOH we needed to add to reach the equivalence point. The reason why this is important is because in order to determine the concentration of hydroxide or, or, or hydrogen, we need to know the final volume because we, if we have the moles, we need the liters in order to figure out the concentration, right? So we have the volume now. Once this 35.09 is added, where's my cursor? So once this 35.09 is added, to the 50, you end up with 85.9. And that's gonna be the final volume. So keeping that there, we can we can go down here a little bit. <clears throat> so now that we have the now that we have all these all these values, we can finally try to figure out what's the concentration at the end. Um, so we need to use the conjugate base. I'll call it um I'll call it B minus. So B minus plus H2O yields HB plus OH minus. We have our initial concentration of our conjugate base. I'm sorry, of our, um, yeah, of our conjugate base is going to be the moles divided by the liter, but divided by the, well, it, we already know the concentration. It's going to be the moles that we needed to neutralize divided by the liters that we just figured out, which was given to us 0 0.0302. This is going to be zero. This is going to be zero plus X plus X minus X. So we have X squared divided by 0 0.0302 minus X equals the KB. Once we find X, this X value gives us the OH minus concentration. Then we can figure out the, actually, we didn't, we didn't need the, malar the, the milliliters here. I mean, we didn't need it, but it's good to find. So, oh, we did. Not right now. Oh, maybe not right now. So, um, <clears throat> Since we have the OH concentration, we can simply just take the negative log of the OH and then do 14 minus that. So 14 minus 
negative log of x would give us our pH. And that's finally your answer. Okay, so I'm going to end the recording uh, and then we can answer questions.